So here is the SCA harassment and bullying policy. I'll also put it in the chat below so you can read it more. Um, but I just want to make sure that everybody sees this and knows that the SCA prohibits harassment and bullying of individuals, of all individuals and groups. Okay, let me come back here. I will stop presenting and I will hand it over to our instructor. All right, can you guys see us and hear us? Okay, perfect. You can thumbs up, thumbs down, because um, I can't really hear you. Perfect. Um, okay. Uh, there we go. There's the, the harassment policy. So I the idea of this, guys, is um, to, we're going to do some simple braiding. I'm going to, I have a head model right here. Um, and I can also do it on my own if you want to see the techniques being done on the side. But the idea for today was to do uh, some two and three strand braids and to do some French and English braids to show you some of the differences in them. Uh, because this is a really nice time to begin to practice because we are not going anywhere for a while. And um, I mean, we're going lots of places, but you know, it's a really nice time. Like a, um, in the pictures you've been seeing in the Roman coronet that I've been wearing, it took me two months to nail the hair in that. <coughs> with, stop it. Thank I'm you. sorry. I, that's our dog. Anyway, so I thought this would be a really nice time to, can you let him out? Cause he's going to complain at us. I apologize for my dog. Um, that, he's just going to bark on the other side of the door. Oh, no, nice. he's going to go bother Dad. Okay. Yeah. The dad that she's speaking to is the Prince <laughs> of the East, who will come up here shortly and bother us <laughs> about why the dog is bothering him. So we'll have fun with that, see how that goes. <laughs> so, so nobody is immune to the dog. So so anyways, I, I thought that I would uh, show you a couple things I do have. Uh, Typically, if you find me in real life, I have some of the braiding citations that uh, I've learned from some of the other researchers in the SCA. Depending on your persona, I typically find statues that we can do hair off of and stuff like that. Um, I don't do uh, funeral hair because funeral people don't move. I've done it a couple times, and then when they start moving, their hair falls out, and then I just... Like I, I've done all that and it doesn't work. So, um, but I've been pulling off of statues for about a thousand years worth of hair work. So, um, and then again, depending if it's a queen and coronets and persona and then making everything work, it's, it's you, I could go for hours and talk about hair for hours and hours and hours. But anyways, I thought right now I would start with, so I guess I kind of want to see a show of hands or can we unmute? What do you guys want to start with first? Um, do you want to start with a two strand braid or a three strand? Three strand. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you want to do? Show me what you want to do. Show me what you want. Three strand. Three strand. Um, and part of three. Uh, and part of three. Okay. Okay. Part of the reason for showing. Part of the reason for showing. Uh oh. Um, how ultimately when I do hair time, 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 Braid Eleanor uh, to show you because it's easy because also there's a tension with two strand that makes them really hard. Um, and then can you go grab the conditioner from the bathroom? I'm going to show you a trick that I do uh, that mimics medieval hair that's completely cheating, um, but it works really well. Um, so hang on a second. Well, first thing is medieval hair was gross for modern standards. And uh, like the, the research that I've seen is that they washed it about once a year 
And uh, yeah, that, that's what I'm hearing. I can't find, I mean, it's sort of like, how do you document, if you were to go a thousand years from now, do any of you document that you wear deodorant? The only reason that we would find out that we wore deodorant is that we would find like a CVS buried in a landstorm. Yep, that's fine. And that there was deodorant in it, and we had to figure out what the fuck it was, and then there it is, deodorant. But, so I can't really find a lot on hair, on what we did with it. Um, but I am finding a little bit that it was washed like once in a while, like like once and once about a year. Um, so washed. I uh, can't. I can't remember exactly where it came from. It might. It was. I think it was a book that Fortune is reading online. But there was a quote that said something about a good son should gather water for his elderly mother or parents to wash their hair twice a week. Um, yeah, I, I, but what would they use for soap and how abundant was soap? And is that wetting it versus soaping it? And, you know, um, from what I can tell, the condition of hair, uh, I wash my hair about once a month and its condition stays pretty uh, pretty pretty well honestly and i'm also arguing that i think that modern times the, the some of people's longer hair of of the older times is because we didn't wash it as much and it was in better condition uh so that is is part of i mean if you actually jamie has this amazing hair it goes down to here sarah has amazing hair too it's just it's amazing like gal play with it whenever i can uh, so but the other thing I will tell you is that the oilier your hair is, um, the, the better it will hold a lot of these styles. So uh, people will complain to me, my hair is really gross. So I've been camping for three days. I'm like, listen, I will hook it up because the greasier it is, I have a teenager and she has super greasy hair because she's a teenager and I can nail hairstyle after hairstyle in her hair because it's greasy. So if you could sit up for a second. So the first thing I'm going to, I mean, Katie, I, Katie is here and Katie, I've done Katie's hair for, I, I, Katie, I don't even know how many years, but so Katie has seen me do this a thousand times. Uh, the first thing I will always do is this is a spray bottle guys. And this is from, um, okay, this is from the Christmas tree shop and this is a pressurized spray bottle and it works really, really well. Um, and so I always wet the hair down, head up. And um, I will always, hairstyles is so much more about prepping the hair for the hairstyle than it is about actually, oh my God, your hair is in good shape today. <laughs> Thanks. <Anytime>. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you prepped it for me today before you got yelled at. So I love this spray bottle. If you guys ever see it at the Christmas tree shop, if you hold it, it like sprays continuously. Yeah, I can feel it. I love it. Um, and those of you that know me, I always travel with conditioner and a brush and a spray bottle. And the next thing that I will travel always with is a bit of conditioner. Do you see this? Katie already knows this. And if you don't have conditioner, hand lotion does exactly the same thing for hair. Um, I think you may get a visit from the prince shortly. I'm not sure. But do you see now it's starting to look like, turn this way, see? It's starting to look like it's gonna hold a braid without being all frizzy and gross. And, and there's no gel, no conditioner, no, no anything in it. Um, and then when it sets or I tie it at Penzig for four or five days, you're going to have really nicely conditioned hair. I use Diva Curl because that's what I live with at home. It doesn't matter what conditioner you use. But yeah, Hannah has obviously, as you can see, really different hair than I do. So um, you're, mel you're more than welcome to pop in, honey, if you want. You'll know some of these faces. So, all right. So for a three strand head up, for a three strand braid, it's just really simple, guys. You just take
take the three parts. Can you turn this way? Can you see the three parts? Nice. Thank you for your nonverbal communication. And you're just going to over. And her hair is refusing to comply <laughs> because I haven't braided it in forever. And that's the other thing you will learn. The more you do the hair, the more the follicles will go. But braiding is also, do you see this hand holding this right here? Can you lean back? Thank you. You can lean right on me. See this hand holding the tension here? That's actually really what's holding that. And you hold the tension. And then here, you see I'm holding the braid here. And then over like that. That's actually what makes braiding work. It isn't the weaving. It's holding it together as you're braiding. See how I'm holding it? And braid. Holding it. And braid. Holding it. And braid. Holding it. And braid. Like that. Just turn around. I'm going to show them over the top of your head. What? You're fine. Just turn around. <laughs> Put your legs here. Like that? Yeah, that'll work. Actually, just up a little bit. If you want to do the same thing, like over the top, you want to say, her head is not going to like this because, because I haven't, oh. <laughs> Because I haven't braided her hair like this, like in ever. But if I wanted to pin a veil in, which she won't because she hates veils and wimples forever, and because she's a young girl and won't wear them. But it's the same thing. So here's your three strands. Can you guys see that? So here's your braid. See how I'm holding it? This is really, braids are about, oh, look, the prince is here. Hi, Dave. And now I'm show, I'm doing a French braid, which I'll show you more about it. But it's really, braiding is so much more. And I imagine, Lisa, you're going to probably just nod a lot. It's a lot like weaving. It's tension. It's, it is. This is just weaving hair. This is all about the tension. Yeah, I'll clean the hairs out later. <laughs> but see like this? And it's just three strands. One, two, three, holding it over. And I'll show you how to add the other one on the back of her hair. But one, two, three. Oh, I'm getting my sleeve caught in it. Like that. So I don't know if the rest of you guys noticed, but the prince has almost enough hair on the top of his head to do this too. <laughs> so. He did the prince Did he do the Shrek thing? He did the Shrek thing. So, and then here, again, over, but it's really, again, we're back to tension. You've got to hold the braid. Hold the braid, hold the braid, hold the braid. Hold the braid, hold the braid, hold the braid. And that, that's the braiding piece of it. Right there. So in something else I'll show you, can you scooch your butt up? I'm gonna show you a trick for those of you that want your braids to go all the way to the end. Can you see the end of this? Let's see if I can do this in a way to show you. Yeah. Let's see if I can do this. So a way to get to the end. Get down to the end. You see how like this one's thinner? So when you fold this one over, just throw a little bit of this one into it. That's all you gotta do. You won't even notice it. I'm not rubber branding you up because you're gonna get braided and <laughs> rebraided and braided and rebraided. You see how this one's thicker? So just split it up as you're braiding through. 
so that you can get all the way down to the end. Because unless you're being super, 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 really, you're not even going to see that I did that. So, and then now I have a way to put valve pins in if I want. Though I would have probably done an English braid here unless I needed it really flat. But that that's a two that's a three strand braid right there. All right, let's take that out. Um Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, please. If I've you were gonna right attach a veil to that, what would you do with the rest of the braid? Just kind of let it hang behind the veil? Would you so bring it around? period you are, um, take a bobby pin, stick it back here, and then put bow pins up here. Uh, if you're going to put ripples attached to all of it, and depending on where you need all of your, um, dep depends how period you're going to go. But yeah. Um, so and some people can do the two braids down, depends on that. That's something I was going to work on next month, depending on what they needed and how to get those to lay right, because that, that's a dance. Um, so, but yeah, but just that alone, with, I have valve pins in the other room, just that alone will set your valve right on top of your head and it won't make you crazy anymore because valves move with the valve pins. If, but with that braid up there, they won't anymore. So are there other questions about how to do a, a three strand braid? There you go, Sarah, you got it. Now in the dance of that, in the dance of that, is now is now back back can you see me can you see me mm -hmm. is to start it to how start it how you, if you want it to go down want it to go down because you've got to hold it in the back and get the tension wherever you start it is where it's going to set So you have to set it there. Your fingers. There you go. If you just want to braid down in the back like that. But you have to begin to start feeling it. Now I look bald. <laughs> Hence why you never see me like that. Uh, there you go, Sarah. Yeah, see? And the thing is, guys, this is just, I'm not a magician. I, you can ask these two and my husband. I have done this thousands and thousands. How many times, honey, have I braided hair? <laughs> <laughs> thousands of times. <laughs> Th <laughs> thousands. Yeah. Yeah. I think you've done me a half a dozen times. Yeah, at least. Yeah, at least. Yeah, at least. I am. I am. And I when, when I was. Yeah, I was doing, go her practice I'm doing it in my practice with little kids during the week. Like, I'll send them when they're done with therapy, seven, eight, nine-year-olds. They come out after therapy with a hairdo, and they go away. So, like, <laughs> yeah. So, it, it's like a thing uh, because you need to keep your hands practiced and moving, too. So, um, so like, what Sarah's doing right now is practice and 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 practice. Um, so... Um, let me show you a two strand because there's a bit of a, a trick to that. And then I can show you a French braid in an English braid. And, um, and then really you wet your hair guys and you practice. Um, she just wants me to brush her hair again. <laughs> And the thing about two strand braids I love is because they look, Sarah, this is what, oh, she'll be back in a minute. This is what, these are so pretty and they look really, really fancy and they're so easy.
So Sarah, this is what we did on your hair that one time. I think the first time I met you and did your hair. See, that was the day we became hair friends. That's the day we became hair friends at that scola. Okay, if you can. Two strands, two strands. I mean, hair is really simple. It is not a faker in any way. It's like two strand braid, two strand braid, three strand braid, three strand braid, four strand braid, four strand braid. It's so. Um. So a two strand braid is going to literally take two strands, and they're going to wrap them on themselves. But the dance of a two strand braid is that you have to twist it on itself. Or they won't actually I just twist it on the wrong way. They won't stay. So you see that they're twist and then you twist on itself and twist and twist it on itself and twist it on itself, and twist it on itself, and twist it on itself. And that that's literally, I'm trying to see, you can see it that way. And that's kind of how it holds itself in place. And then these are just super, and then literally what I do is, hang on, I'm gonna make Hannah hold this. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get bobby pins. my bobby pins because I'm so fancy. Let me turn around. And what you want to do with the twist on itself is you'll see it sort of hold it into itself. Which way are you twisting? I'm twisting into itself um, so that it holds itself. Um, you'll figure it out pretty quickly because it will come untwisted. Um, and this is where, and I'm now going to shout myself out, but us curly girls, we have an advantage on this one because our hair will hold it to itself. This, this won't. So you turn it and then you're just going to twist it right into itself. I used to pre-twist it. It doesn't work that well. And then one of the things I'm going to show you can you turn so that you can see the back? And you guys have seen this. May I have the other one? Oh, that did stay. <laughs> Is um, I've done this hairstyle on so many queens and baronesses. Is that this is just pretty. And then a coronet fits right on top of it. Here, let me bobby pin that in. Turn. Oh my God, you are ridiculous. You can see that that sits right underneath the coronet right there and it's it's really easy and um period or not i've seen a lot of those lines in a lot of different things you can put a veil under it it's one of those quick what i called field hair this works really well in the summer this is quick field hair i you know katie you've worn this a thousand times 
Uh, this is what we did with you, Sarah, that one time. It's super pretty. You can also sew it and tie it up really fast. Again, I don't know if I've seen it as much as I know that the period of it is documented because these are great braids. Um, and then it, it just looks beautiful. And it, it's one of those really easy things. So that's one of the two strand braids. And also two strand braids are just really nice and comfortable to go up and over. And some of the German hair that I've seen in some of the, I don't know what they're called, but those caps, they seem to be perfect for the, the two strand braids. Plus my daughter has a ridiculous amount of hair. Can you take those out? So that's the two strand, but really the two strand is about, yeah, that looks great, Jamie. But yeah, and you're just going to want to twist it. And the other thing with two strands that you're going to want to do is, um, is basically with any of these guys is train your hair. If you're going to start wearing it, train your hair. Um, I'm hoping to next month do some Viking hair. And one of the things is the Viking, you'll see the Valkyrie with the top knot. And nobody's hair goes into a top knot easily. But there's a couple people that every event I went to for like two months, I'm like, I'm going to top knot you. And then by like the second month, boom, it went in because their hair, your hair follicles will start to shift and move um, because hair is incredibly flexible. It's like linen. It moves and it, it, it gets used to it. So um, so that that's kind of the idea. And then the side knots, Katie, we did that with you one time. The, the side Viking knots, those are so cute. They're Princess Leia knots, really. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't say that right. We can't. Um, but they're super cute. So, um, but again, it's all documentable. I found them on all different things, and they're just cute. And they're fun, and they're fast, and uh, um, it just makes the whole line of the outfit. It's wonderful. So what I want to show you is what I call, I showed you this earlier, and it's, it's a three-strand braid that we're just going to show as a French braid. And then I'm going to show you an English braid to show you the difference. And then that kind of winds us up for tonight. Um, you have to sit up. She's on a screen. Any of you have teenagers? Okay. She's literally on, like, a, I, I don't even know what she's doing right now. But if you have a small child and you want to do their hair, put them on a screen. And then you can do their hair for hours. <laughs> So, so a French braid, or there's so they call them a ton of different things. It's the flat braid. Because you're going to start up here. And it's again, it's a three strand braid, like this. And then you're going to pull in a piece of hair like that. And just like everything else, it's about the tension. See that? It's about the tension right here. You see, there's the tension. And I like to scoop with my fingers like this. I don't really care how you do it. As long as you get those nice lines that you want and hold it with your tension. And you're just gonna pull it right over. I'll show you what the difference is with an English braid in a minute. Sorry about your eye. <laughs> You guys see the one thing about having a blonde with highlights is you can see the French braiding really nicely. I like to oh, they'll come back when you swim in the pool. <laughs> or it'll turn green. <laughs> it won't turn green, it's a saltwater pool. And then braid, 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 braid. Again, hold the tension. Or if it's slimy enough, it'll hold its tension. That looks good, Jamie. There you go. Sarah, that looks good too. And again, I'm losing my ends. So if you want longer ends, just join them in. Probably gonna do it up a little bit farther. 
Join them in. There we go. So it heads up down like that. Then she's on a screen. She doesn't care. Did she say, I think she rolled her eyes too, guys. They love you. <laughs> All right. All right. So that's a French braid where you're going to weave it right in. So the English braid, and this is the braid that I actually really like for bailing. If I know I'm going to do some bailing over the top, this is the, actually trying not to spray my daughter in the face. Sometimes I don't work that hard at it. Sometimes I do spray her in the face. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So the English braiding, so the French braid goes like this. Okay. So it goes right into the braid. The English braiding is going to go underneath when you braid it so that the braid actually looks like, so the surface of the hair is going to look flat and the braid is going to look like it's sitting right on top of the hair. Okay. And that's also kind of how, if you wanted to do, Eventually, I mean, I could crown braid her too, but it's going to be a pain in the ass, but we could do it. But that's kind of how a crown braid does it too. So, so with a French braid, we started by going over with an English braid, we're going to go under under and under and under and then pull the hair like that and the braid will start to show up on top you see it's starting to show and it's the exact same technique you're just pulling it underneath It's a little messy, but there it is. And then braid, braid, braid. And again, I'm going to get my long end, and if I want a longer end, I have to divide up. And you can see how that's, see how that's on top like that? Looks good, Jamie. Yeah, there you go, Sarah. And this is, when you're doing it on yourself, you're going to have to learn how to feel it with your fingertips, because that's the only way if you're, if you're braiding yourself and then you get your tension and you practice and you begin to feel it and you'll get it. This is the braid that I like to put into veils if I'm running them over the top of the head, because you're not going to feel it against your head. And if you miss, you won't stab and get blood. It's real. So, so I'm going to show you now I'm going to show off a little bit. I'm going to show you a four strand braid um, cause they're pretty. Um, I've only seen them in a couple Italian wrens. Um, and then I weave them in because still weaving is weaving and weaving is fine. And I figured if it's hair in their weaving, then someone had to do it somewhere. So, so, so it's four right here. 
one, two, three, four, and you go over, it's very much like a pot holder, over, under, over, and like everything else, you have to hold the tension, over, under, and over. And honestly, I sometimes I use this for fighters because it's a really nice flat braid and it goes really nice under a helm. Jamie, you may want it for fencing. Can that's you nice. describe a little bit more what you're doing with your hands? Yeah. It's a little hard for me to see. I'll show you. So that's what the braid looks like. And I actually tip your head back. So it's a really nice braid with a center plait. And here I'll show it to you guys. So this is four strands, and this is just me being a doof right now. It's fun. I like to sometimes do this with two, two strands sized down the side to the back. So here's four strands. Do you see the four? We're starting to lose light too in here. So you're going to go over, under, over, like this. So now you have a four strand. And then the second one, over, it's just weaving, guys. Under, over, and then you hold it. Yeah, and then it's just the same thing again. Over, under, over. I've sort of trained my fingers. Over, under, over. As you can see my So body. are you always braiding in one direction then? Like always? Yeah, on this one, okay. you're always starting from this side and over, under. Now the five strand, you can go from both sides. Six strand, you have to go from one side. I, I don't know why. I think it's just like I could think about it, but my head hurts right now, so I'm not going to. Math. Right. It, it, it is the nature of weaving, I think. Uh, that's a four strand. And it's it doesn't look like very much, but it, then you kind of go, ooh. And especially like with Jamie's hair and Sarah's hair, because it'll go nice and flat. Um, you know, what? I should probably show you guys a herringbone too while I'm at it. That's probably the last one. Um, or I hate the name of this. It's called a fishtail. I think that's just an ugly name for a really pretty braid. Um, and then um, and a double fishtail is a box braid, and I sometimes do that for men's laurel ceremonies because it's a super butch and they're really proud of it, whatever. I think it looks really phallic, but they love it. So, no, I won't do that to you. My daughter's like, so, um, so the herringbone, are we good with the four strand messing around with that? Just takes practice and getting your fingers to just do weird things that you have to get used to just doing. Katie, did you have a question? Can we unmute Katie because she's talking and I am not that great at reading lips? She should be able to unmute herself, but let me see if I can do it. Katie, can you unmute? Yeah, it's not letting me unmute her, unfortunately. Katie, can you write it in the chat? show you guys herringbone while we're here head up so I'm going to see if I can get a little more light on her hair Does that help you see her hair a little bit can you So a herringbone is just two, and all you're going to do on this is pull one strand over and hold it, 
one strand over, hold it, pull it up, and then like that, like that. Pull from the outside, pull from the outside. Can you kind of see it setting up? ends up looking like fish scales or tails on a fish or I don't know. Um, it is a super elegant, pretty braid, um, but you need to hold it really tight and it will end up making its own, over time, its own links on it. It's just the setup at first. Um, so all it is is pulling from the outside in. So that it sort of wraps from underneath into it. And this just takes forever. So have whoever's hair you're doing get a beer or maybe not her. She's 18. Though she is going to college and will have her own beer I won't know about. And again, it's tension on this one, or it'll get wiggly and it'll look like a drunk herringbone. Or a corset you didn't tie right. But so that's kind of what the herringbone looks like. Like that. And that's all that is. And then the, the box braid is two herringbones. And then you do it from the other way. But I'll probably show that on the Viking braid night if we do that because that's more what I do on that night. That's a little bit more complicated. You just keep pinning it. Literally, this can take like half an hour. It takes forever. So, all right. Uh, do you guys want to unmute and ask questions while I finish up this long break? I wasn't going to do the other side. Are there any questions? What has been the most requested hairstyle by the Royals? Uh, get it off my neck. Um, honestly, you know, and I'm going to let this trick out for the Royals. First of all, there's this mad rain going on right now. So, like, I don't get to do a lot of this except with Margarita. Have you noticed that, Your Highness? I have. That's why I asked the question. <laughs> uh, so that that, that that two strand that I showed you, um, I do a lot with anybody with a cornet um, because uh, to fit it underneath the cornet works really well because cornets are, uh, you know, depends how the cornet fits, but that's really super pretty. Um, so I've done a lot of that. Um, I've also done that with um, sewing in hair braids to that and flowers and veils um, so that the lines look right even if because uh, I often I mean not that you know you guys would know anything I've I've been doing royal hair for four I mean I've done royal hair honestly on and off for 20 some odd years but um, the last four years I've done a bit more of it and uh, we don't have a lot of time period <laughs> hair takes actually a, a lot of time so I, I have to bring bobby pins and hairspray and um, hurry with me to do royal hair. And um, so I don't get to do it, you know, events like Penzik and Roses, I get to do more period hair, but during a day event, I don't get to do a lot of period hair. Um, so often getting it done back here really pretty, getting it up in a lot of bobby pins, and then being able to veil the whole thing in some pins works really quickly. And because I'm given it the most 20 minutes and that's why they're signing scrolls or, or uh, consulting on an issue or something like that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, I don't, you're not given a lot of time to, to finish the look, if you will. All right, Do I think I got any? myself unmuted. <laughs> um, I've done a four braid. I've done a four braid that's under, that's over, under, over, and then you twist the middle. 
And that way you can do it from both sides. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Do you have any um, advice or experience with adding hair? Um, yes. <laughs> that could be its own class. Uh, not necessarily. I think it, it is um, a matter of, it depends what you need. What look are you trying to accomplish? Uh, I have added hair to a Marguerite, for example, if you notice that one look with the really long braids and the ribbons. That was uh, something that we had to blend that. Uh, if you want to turn around, I'll do your other side. You just need to find a rubber band because I only have one rubber band. Um, so it, it's a matter of what you need. Uh, there was, uh, so we had to blend that hair because she had just colored it. And we had a hair and then she colored it. So then I had all my weaver friends go, oh my God, time to make hair. And uh, so we did that. And then we had to weave the ribbon in. And then I took her hair and I French braided in the hair with the extensions from here so that it made it to her waist. Um, so that it was in, like you it was in from here so it wasn't too much weight. Um, there are other people where I have... Um, done like a bun here and then we've put the extensions around that because they've had short hair. I've had other people where I've done a French braid and then I've sewn in braids on top of it. It, it depends what you need, what your look is. Um, and it depends on, you know, uh, you know, uh, what, what is going on right now. I'm looking at getting a wrap for me with the, the Roman look I'm going for right now because I need a little bit more height right here because palas are weighing down my own hair a lot but thankfully i only have to take a picture for seven seconds but when we do get to having an event i'm going to need a little more height so i'm probably going to have to fake it since i don't have roman hair to my waist and i won't buy this winter or whenever we get back together so you know those are kind of the things that we're going to need for you know so it's, it's really based on what you need it for and what kind of look you're going for does that help Yes, thank you. Yeah, so, yeah, and so, and also, because, like, there's somebody I know, there's somebody I know, and I love her, and then she, um, she, she, uh, veil pinned, I love these veil pins, she veil pinned her, her wimple, her veil to the headband, I thought it was genius, her bangs were out of the way, she had a braid, and it was in a headband, I was like, you're smart, that's awesome. So, uh, so that works for her for that. So, I mean, it, it's really a matter of, I don't, you know, whatever your persona is and, and what, you, what look you're going for and what you need to do. And I, can you sit up and be on a screen? So, <laughs> um, so it, it, it's really more a matter of whatever you need, whatever you need and, and need for the look. And then, you know, it, it, it is honestly a, a combination of, you know, what modern techniques can we bring in to make this fast? Because obviously, I mean, I've hair tied some people's hair at Pensick and it stays a week. Um, yeah, and because that's what they did. But you know, if you're in an event and I don't get to your hair till noon, you know, on a Saturday, we we don't have the time. So how do you want to make this work for an afternoon? And how can we make it work? So, other questions? Pretty quiet. It's never this quiet. So, if there are no other questions, or while people are thinking, can you talk about the class you're going to teach uh, next week and then some of the additional ones we're going to schedule? What we're talking about next week is on. Um, so once the braiding is down, I, I'm hoping for a three or four week sequence because I kind of thought this would be such a great time to practice braiding because all our hair is getting out of our own control. <laughs> and um, so I thought, you know, this is the perfect time to, to teach braiding. But next week, what I wanted to teach some people is how to end these braids in a period way. And um, so teach some hair sewing. And I have some... Um, mundane 
needles that I love that I use for hair sewing and I have some period needles and I also was going to teach some hair taping because hair taping is really really comfortable um and um so that was going to be next week in in the uh class because then I have this really great head to teach on and she's had it happen to her for years so she's just going to do exactly what she's going to do right now and ignore me entirely while we do this and I'll hopefully have better lighting so that you guys can see the hair better but it's sort of like in stages you can't really do hair taping or sewing if you don't braid so um i kind of figured while we're all home this summer if we all you know whoever wanted to braid more it's such a great time to practice i've been doing a lot of my own hair and then in three weeks i was hoping to uh do a class um i've been practicing because viking is such a thing right now um, I wanted to show some of the, cause some of the Viking hair that's out there, there's some really fun ones. Uh, and I thought I would show, there's a couple really fun ones. Like some of it is obviously the Valkyrie on the side and on the top. And that's so easy. And I've got some hair sticks to make them stick until we get them better. But also there's another one where it's, um, you, you pull it up in the back in a braid and then another braid, and then you wind the braid in it, and it's just so much fun. And um, and I, I'm kind of of the mindset that, like, I know the SCA does, like, one or two things really well, but it's so much fun to do some other things. And um, so I wanted to kind of show them to some people on her hair because, like, she has perfect hair to do anything with. And, uh, and I, did, did she roll her eyes again? Because she's... So I have one whole Viking outfit because the guy who fights for me in Crown is Viking and the hairstyle you described is usually how I actually do my hair for the Viking one. It was some woman who was like buried or found with like her actual hair. So it's like yeah, completely period because yeah, hey, there's a dead body. Yeah, it was a bog body. So it wasn't like a burial body. So it was a bog body. So I can cope with that as a hairstyle. Uh, so, uh, so, so, I, I that, like, so I, that, then the last week, to, to dissect a couple different hairstyles, like have people come and go, okay, how do we do this one? Because, uh, that's honestly what I do with people all the time. And like the Roman one that I'm doing is off of a bust and a paula and a corn and a circlet, not a cornet. So how did I get to that? And, and, you know, what does that little tiny line mean? And what does that little tiny line mean? And, and, you know, all these different things are, I was just watching somebody on an Italian run go, well, that's just a fancy ponytail. I'm like, no, it's not. That's a shaved forehead and it's this and it's that. And you can mm, mm, stop, not a ponytail. So don't shave your forehead because you won't be happy. <laughs> But um, so like all these things, I thought it would be fun, like, you know, depending on how much interest we got, people to bring up pictures and we could spend some time just, you know, going, how did they get there? Because that's so much fun. Okay, for dorks like me that do this all the time. Uh, and because I've done this with so many people uh, and how to get to their final hairstyle. Uh, and then, you know, can we build wigs and can we build extensions and how can we pull it off so that you can get there easily and quickly with whatever skill sets and whatever hair you have to to get you to wherever you need to be for your persona so that that was my idea uh to you know have some fun with this while we were in between and have this time so so there's your other hair and going as you see you can't really see there's not a lot of light hang on there you go because, you know, herring bones are easy and they take nothing. So, but I've done a few of them. So, so that's, the, of, so that's the, the four week, the four week. And then if there's week. other, and if there's other, other or anything, or anything, or anything, or anything I said, is, is some, said is, is some people have offered a lot. I've done a lot. I've, I've done a lot. lot. I've offered hair and auctions. It, it's something I love to do. So, and I research it all the time. So, so yeah, I guess that's it. If there's no other questions, 
Um, I will I will stop recording for the now then. Well, let me just say a couple things. I'm on a uh, Tyndall and Albrick's webpage as the head attendant. If you need to email me for questions, I, I am on Facebook as Jody Rockauer Rossman. Um, if you want to, I will always play with hair. Always, everybody who knows me knows that. Um, so if I can help in any way, um, it, that's an easy thing to do. Reach out to me and uh, I can do this again. Or if you have questions, please feel free to do so. And thank you, Lisa, for hosting this. Thank you. Um, and um, I'll see you guys later. Thank you.